Welcome to the Craftsman Interview. I'm here with Andy Denton from Perfect Brewing Supply in Libertyville, Illinois, over on Route 176, just, uh, what are we, just west of the Culver's, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, the objective of these interviews is to meet entrepreneurs, creative people doing cool stuff in our community, and Andy was nice enough to accept the invitation to sit down and uh, give us the opportunity to learn a little bit about his business. So let's just jump right into it, Andy. What, how long have you been in this business and what were you doing before that? This business, we've been here, we reopened Perfect Brewing Supply a year ago, November, so a little over a year ago. Okay. Um, previous to this, I was been in, in the outdoor industry uh, for about 12 years. So I'm pulling from a totally different okay. realm, still retail, but yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about that. What did you do? Outdoor in industry. I started out of college uh, uh, in, this, in a ski shop and backpack shop, similar to basically an outdoor gear shop. Okay. Um, worked my way through that, ended up managing that company uh, with uh, one or two other people. Um, that led me to being a, a kayak rep for a, short, oh, for a period cool. of time. So I was hanging on beaches, doing boat demos, things like that, kind of living the rock star life. It was kind nice. of fun. Um, ended up working for the North Face corporate for a short time through that. Um, then realized that I needed to stay home more. I have a wife and family now, so I okay. had, had to stop that right. gallivanting where, around the... Where, you weren't in Illinois when you were doing that? No, I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana still. Okay. So, but okay. my territory was 13 states, so I was, I was in Illinois quite a bit. Okay. But not my home base. All right, got it, got it. The, uh, you grew up in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. Went to high school there? Correct. College? Yep, sure did. Wow, everything. So, okay. yeah, I uh, <laughs> went to Carroll High School, which is now a very large school in that area, um, University of St. Francis. Um, so, played soccer there. Okay. Um, I was recruited to play there and other places, but so Catholic schools. Yeah. All right. Well, Carroll was a public school at that point. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, right. the, yeah, very unique school, very big vocational program. I think during FFA FFA week, everyone drove big, huge tractors into <laughs> into. But, and that's probably due to International Harvester and that industry being around there. Is that possibly? Yeah, it's it's okay. definitely very agricultural based. Um, well. Used to be, I should say. It's okay. a definitely different area now. Fort Wayne is now becoming a pretty big leader in the hospital medical world. Um, International Harvester was there. I think they've been out since the 80s. Okay. The manufacturing okay. there, so. Got it. But Got yeah, it. Um, great town. Biggest small town ever. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's great. It's so great. how did you, um, did you meet your wife in Fort Wayne? Are you guys both from yes. Indiana? Yes. She's not from Indiana. She's um. Originally from Flint, Michigan, but her father was a museum guy to where he would go through and to different museums and make them profitable, make them a viable museum. So they wow. travel along quite a bit. Very, very interesting yeah. life. Yeah, I'd love to talk um, about that guy. Yeah, he's got a few stories. Um, the, but we met in college. She's a couple years younger than me. She played soccer, I played soccer. We really didn't meet or decide to start dating until we were working together. She was actually, I hired her in the outdoor shop um, she was working in uh, her field of communications, making little parts move and animate, and she oh, didn't like that anymore. So okay. she started working <laughs> in, the, in the outdoor reel. Um, we started dating. She ended up, we both co-managed um, the, the place I was working. Uh, we were both working, unfortunately, was looking like it was going to go out of business. So she left, moved up here, got a job with H&M. They recruited her and brought sure. her here right away. Sure. Um, and then when... Roots was the name of the company. We finally went out of business, unfortunately. I had a decision to make. Am I staying in Fort Wayne? Or am I making the leap? So, um, which, was, which was tough, because I still have rental houses there. I still have another business there. I run with the university. But all in all, it was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made, uh, picking up and, and moving and coming here. And we're now married. We have a nine-month beautiful son. Nice. So, Congratulations. Oh, thank you. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So, what what gave you the bug uh, as it relates to home brewing? Um, how did you start this company, get involved? How did you meet John, who is sure. your co-owner? Tell us a little bit about that journey. Okay. I will start with kind of how I got started, and then it, everything will probably fall into place. Okay. Um, I have a cousin who was trained to be a professional brewer probably when I was 14 or 15. So I've been around that craft industry and kind of that movement for a while. Um, 
because we'd always have the holiday events and we'd be talking craft beer, we'd be talking, hey, we tried this. Now, granted, I was of age when it, all this was happening, okay. of course. Of course, yeah. Um, the, <laughs> my mother may be watching, so no. So, um, so that kind of got me the bug of really going out and looking for different things. Um, I was that guy in college. I was always, I had the wall of bottles up. That was always something different that you couldn't find. When I was in college, there weren't that many options like there are now. Right. Um, right. And then back to my father-in-law, he actually got me my first kit nice. um, 12, 13 years ago. So he kind of pushed me along to start making it myself. It took me a year to make it. Like most people who get started, like, ah, I have this kit, I'm intimidated, what am I gonna do? It's so okay. nerve wracking. Then you do it, you're like, well, this is easy. Anyone can do this. And so that kind of got the bug started. Okay. Um, I did one kit and right from there, went into the all grain brewing, um, buying more equipment and expensive things that I probably didn't need, but it was very exciting. It's a cool hobby. It's a sure. fun hobby. Yeah. Very fun hobby. It's it's growing quite a bit. Um, met John working at the ski shop Highland in Highland Park, William Ski and Patio. Um, he was a kid kind of close to the area that came in. I'd been there a couple of years, and that's kind of where we met. Okay. Both with our passion for skiing, um, and then I was brewing at this point, and then I said John, want to come over and brew. And so that's kind of where that started. So we started brewing and we started being almost every two weeks we were brewing and there's a couple of guys that come in, but John was always the one that would always be there. Nice. And so that's kind of how we got started in this whole addiction of home <laughs> brewing, we'll say. It's a healthy addiction. Um, so, I mean, we were up to doing 12 to 15 gallons a batch every two weeks. We'd just be giving stuff out, taking into work, sharing with friends and things like that. So that's kind of where we met and then John Went up to Colorado um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, worked part time and volunteered at a, a small brewery out there. Okay. Um, got a ton of experience, learned a ton, really got to do a lot with his passion for brewing. Moved back to go to one of the leading uh, schools here in town, uh, Siebel Institute. Okay. Yeah. Um, to, he's, he wants to go pro at some point, which I think he'd be great at it. So he's got a passion for it. Um, but the, that brought him back to where we got together again. And okay. we were actually at the point, at that point, per, the original Perfect Brew was out of business. Okay. My wife and I had started actually seeing if we wanted to write a business plan. We started writing a business plan to open something like this, if not even in the same location. Okay. And then, so we'd started kind of the mental prep that this is something we wanted to do. Um, John and I were driving back on 176 back from the ski shop to go brew. <laughs> the people that owned the building were inside cleaning it out. U turn, <laughs> we pulled in, started talking, showing our interest and in what our background was, and basically said, Hey, we can do this. Give us a shot. Yeah. Nice. And nice. that's kind of how serendipity, it man. It really, really is the right place <laughs> at the right time. I wish there was a great story of well that's usually struggling. how it goes isn't yeah, it i it mean was, we were driving by i was talking to sarah and junior who own o'toole's yeah and they were telling a little bit of the story about they, they've been in chicago for years and um they live in long grove mm -hmm. and we're driving by a space over on grand avenue where the timothy o'toole's is now and it was that easy they looked over and said hey um, they made a phone call, I think, on the spot, yeah. and next thing you know, it was a 50-yard dash they're in. So it's it's not an uncommon story, yeah. um, it, but it, that's cool, man. It was it was very interesting. It, it was just that simple. I wish it was more complicated, but it was. <laughs> so how long have you been in here? When did you guys first open? Our f first official day was November 1st of 2014. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was the first official day. We were in here a little bit before then, just kind of figuring out okay. where everything was, what to do, and uh, what kind of hurdles we were going to have okay. with everything. Well, who should come here? I mean, uh, what, what, who are you serving? And, that is a great question. And, so, um, I mean, I, I know I'm not, a, I'm not a home brewer myself. Maybe someday I'm more yeah. of a drinker. Sure, sure. <laughs> more we, of all, a we all have our part. You know, it's all part of the cycle. So I support you guys. You but, need people to brew it. Need people to drink it. So. Um, you know, who is your who is your uh, clientele? What, you know, what are you aiming for, and what's on the horizon for um, Perfect Brew uh, down sure. the line? Um, our clientele, or who we who we appeal to, is anyone that has a an inclination about craft brewing, so to speak. Because 
if you like craft brew, brewing or you like what the scene is happening now with all the different breweries that are popping up and all the, the really cool recipes and really cool beers that are out there, yeah. this is for you because you can do that at home and get my, very easily have the same result that you have at some of these other breweries. Um, we do beer, cider, wine, coffee, soda. So okay. anyone that's kind of that DIY person okay. that likes to make things at home, that's us. Um, okay. Our demographic is not, it's, it's all over the board. It's not just a bunch of guys that come in here and, and, and are looking to, 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 to brew beer. So we have a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, we do kids classes for the root beer in the summer. So nice. we, do, we do root beer from scratch, which is really fun. Um, using yeast and we get into the science thing. My background is in environmental science, that's what my degree's in, so it's kind of fun. Um, that's kind of another thing that led me into brewing is I can use science and food and beer, so it's kind of great that way. Um, we do a lot of wine. We've started a wine club that's starting to take off. Um, we have a homebrew club that's going to be going on um, that'll probably be started next month. Um, the We have coffee that I bring from a special roaster that roasts, I, they've been doing it for 15 years and they they roast, I order it, they roast it, then ship it to me. So it's about as fresh as you can get. Wow, okay. Um, it's out of Fort Wayne, that's how I know them. So okay. it's a little, little little tribute to home. Okay. Um, but that's been very well received. Um, I know there's some great coffee places here in town that I'm not trying to take anything away. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> just a small little niche that I have yeah. um, to offer a little different sample. Um, and just because I love coffee and then brewers need something to drink besides beer in the morning, most of the time. Yeah. So <laughs> we decided that was a nice fit for coffee. Um, yeah, for the record, this is coffee. Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. It's, even a lot of traditional German wheat beers and things were considered a breakfast, breakfast drink at some point. So, you know, it's... It's noon somewhere. It's noon somewhere, that's, that's yeah. That's what they say, right? And moderation is always the key. <laughs> well, that's great. So That's yes. great. So, yeah, the demographic for craft beer is all over the map. Um, I just heard an interview with, um, what, what do they call... It's the sommelier version. Um, Cicero. Cicero, mm -hmm. right, right, right. Um, the youngest female Cicero in the country. Yeah. And she's 22. Mm -hmm. So she started studying when she was like 18. Yeah. And just a fascinating interview. And it was so cool because, you know, wine is ha obviously still having a great run. Right. But now craft beer would food pairings and mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. It's really an interesting it, it is. time for beer. It is, and it, it's very exciting. The The Cicerone program is, is terrific because it is doing that matching of, of, of beer and food and among other things as far as flavors. Yeah. Um, the craft beer industry and what a lot of people may or may not know is that it is, you have probably a th million more variables that you can add to your to your brew than you do in wine. Yeah. In my opinion, okay. There's a lot more things, not more moving pieces. So it, it, it many times can be sometimes more complicated at the brewing process. Okay. Um, wine is very much the harvest, the year, the farmer, the blend, and the soil. Right. For right. Brewing, you have at least a hundred to two hundred different grains that you can pick from. That they'll all have different attributes that you can. So I want a beer that has this kind of roastiness, or I don't want this roastiness, but I want this color, or I want this kind of mouthfeel or this type of foam retention that you can kind of take this piece, this piece, this piece and make your beer. Yeah. Which is really exciting for the people that... Yeah, the creative side yeah, is, is yeah. endless. Yeah, right. That or we have a lot of straightforward kits that we've written recipes for that a lot of people love. Okay. I, I love that. So I could come in, mm -hmm. buy a kit, mm -hmm. buy a recipe or have a recipe yeah. come with the kit mm -hmm. and it's as easy as you guys just saying, okay, here are the hops you need here. It's kind of a, mm -hmm. a plug and play, so to speak. For the most part, yeah. Uh, as far as ingredients, I don't need to know. The, you, if, you guys can coach us on that. Yes, know, it's, it's right? es essentially, if you can make soup or boil water, you can make beer. Okay. You don't necessarily <laughs> have to know what's in these little bags, just as long as you know I need to add this one at this time. Okay. Granted, that takes a little bit of the fun out of it, but you know, it's, it can be that simple. Yeah, um, okay. And many people brew that way and they brew fabulous beers. So it, we, we constantly say, and we sometimes sound like a broken record, it can be as simple or as complicated as you, as you want it to be. Yeah. 
Yeah. And we try to embrace everyone for that. So we don't try to make things overcomplicated for people that are just getting started. And we try to make sure we are able to offer that complicated side to the people that are really diving in headfirst into the molecular level of things.